Turning to the book of Job, chapter 25, please. Job, just before the Psalms, you have the book of Job and the verse 25. When you get the chapter, let us bow in a moment's prayer, please. Job, chapter 25. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again tonight for the victory in Jesus, for the power through his blood. We thank thee indeed, Lord, that there's life for a look at the crucified one. And we thank thee that he was crucified and slain for our sins. And as we draw nigh to thee, O God, again tonight we pray, Lord, that I would minister, that I would speak, that I would, Lord, strengthen, encourage thy people, restore backsliders, and save sinners. O oh God, we believe that the time is short. Gross darkness covers our land. We pray, loving Father, tonight that you surround and cover this tent and lift all the heaviness and coldness and lethargy. Lord, that we'd have trailed into this place with us tonight And help us to realize, Lord, that we have a mighty message, the message of redeeming love and saving grace. And I pray tonight, Father, that thou wilt minister to every heart, and thou wilt hear us as we call unto thee, thy great and mighty I am asking these things in our Savior's name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Just one part of a verse of Scripture tonight, and it's the fourth verse of Job chapter 25, verse 4, and the first sentence, how then can man be justified with God? We'll just read it all. Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Let us read it again. The first part of the verse is what we're preaching on tonight. How then Can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? And we know that God will bless this short reading of his word. Some of the greatest questions asked in the word of God are asked by the servant of God, Job, especially in relation to living and to dying. And there was no man more entitled to ask questions than Job. And many of them did he ask. Here are some of them. He said, asked on one occasion, Why died I not from my mother's womb? Well, if you would have lost 11,000 head and seven sons and three daughters and was covered from your, from, from your, from your scalp down to your toes, Uh, with boils and sores, you might have asked the same question. Why died I not from my mother's womb? Why did I come into this world in the first place? What is this all about? Is it all about suffering and sorrow? And I'm sure that there are those of you in this meeting tonight and you've asked that question over very lesser things than Job. You maybe asked the question, what is this all about? Another great question that Job asked was, if a man die, shall he live again? And man dieth and wasteth away and giveth up the ghost, and where is he? That's a great funeral text that I have used on many occasions, this question of Job. Man dieth, wasteth away, and giveth up the ghost, where is he? That's a question. And that's the question I would like to ask to you tonight as we go down into this message. If you were to die tonight, where would you be? As that clay would rattle of the coffin, man, where would your soul be? Because before they pull the clothes up over your head in the hospital bed, you'll be out into eternity and you'll be in one place or another. Where is he? Where is she? Where will you be? Where are you bound tonight? Are you bound to heaven Are you bound for hell because there's no purgatory and there's no in-between? You're either going to the one place or the other. 
You'd rather go and save by the grace of God and redeem through the blood of Christ or you're on your way with the devil to hell. That's the truth. That's the truth of the word of God. Where is he? My Job asked many, many questions. But here in Job 25 and verse 4, he asks a mighty important question. A question I want to address tonight and I want to close this meeting by preaching from. How then can man be justified with God? Or how then can man be justified before God? Justification. Now the word just or justified means as just as if we had never sinned. If that is so, if that is so tonight that we can stand before the eternal holy God as if we had never sinned, if that is so, and let me tell you from the depth of my heart and from the truth of this book that it is definitely so. Well, if that is the case, that's a mighty thing. That's a mighty thing. That's the whole gospel message put into just a, a couple of words. I'll tell you, my dear friend, no greater news could ever reach a poor ma sinning man or woman. No greater news could ever hit your mind or your heart than this, that ye can stand before God just as if you had never sinned. Doomed, damned men and women, we can stand spotless and sinless and blameless before God and we will thank God one day. What a message. What a message. It's no wonder the Apostle Paul called it so great salvation. I tell you, there's nothing greater, so great. How shall we escape if we neglect so great, so great salvation? And that's what we have been doing here in these three weeks. We are bringing the message of salvation, the, the, the glad tidings, the good news that Jesus Christ died, was buried and rose again on the third day, and he can justify men and women surely as they come in faith to him. And so that is the great message that we have tonight. Now, how can a man or how could a man be justified before God? Well, I'm going to give you a number of uh, answers to this question, this old question. And remember, Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And these are old questions. And uh, this is a pointed question. This is a personal question coming to you. Uh, it'll come to you tonight for we'll bring it down personally. So how can a man or a woman be justified before a holy God if they're born in sin and shapen in iniquity and full of wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, as Isaiah the prophet tells us, how can that be? How can it happen? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight, first of all, grace is the source. Grace is the source. Romans 3 and 24, we are justified freely by his grace. And grace is the unmerited, unwarranted favor of God bestowed upon a sinner. It's absolutely nothing to do with us. It is free. Hallelujah. It is free. It comes, it comes from the heart of a loving God. Ho ye, all ye, ho ye that are thirsty, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come and buy without money and without price. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I tell you, listen, it's free. The day the Lord saved me there outside of Fenniskillen that morning, but I tell you, Sammy Workman said he hadn't two brown pennies. Well, I hadn't one brown penny. But thank God that I didn't need money to be saved. And thank God I didn't need education to be saved. Thank God it was free. Free. Free from the very heart of God. Grace is free, I tell you tonight. Free. Grace is free. My grace is sufficient for thee, God says to the Apostle Paul. Listen, it's sufficient to save you tonight. It's sufficient to forgive you tonight. It's sufficient to cleanse you tonight. I don't care how great a sinner you are. I don't care what your past is. I don't care what's hanging over you tonight. Listen, he's, his grace is sufficient to save. It's sufficient to forgive. And it's, it's sufficient uh, to keep 
he, he can keep you by his power. And he wonder Philip Doddridge, and we'll sing it when we're closing tonight, that hymn, Grace, tis a charming sound, harmonious to the ear, heaven with its echo shall resound, and all the earth shall hear, saved by grace alone, that is all my plea. Jesus died for all mankind, and Jesus died for me. And John Newton penned that great hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. Man, he got that well. And the Holy Spirit got it better because the Holy Spirit said, Oh, talking about sin, Oh, wretched man, Paul, the Apostle, Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, no matter how wretched you are tonight, no matter how wicked you are tonight, I tell you, the Holy Spirit got it well. Wretched, wretched. And that's how you are tonight. And that's the way we are in our sin tonight. And that's where, that's, that's, that's where we stand. I don't care whether you're a religious sinner or a wicked sinner. We're all sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amazing grace. Titus, uh, Paul writing to Titus put it like this. The grace of God that bringeth the Savior or salvation to all men. I tell you, it was the grace of God that brought the Savior from above. It was the grace of God that the one that created all things left the ivory palace of heaven. And God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man. And he that the heavens of the heavens couldn't contain came to the womb of the virgin. Oh, what mystery. Oh, what truth. Oh, what miracle. To know that God that created all things was contracted to a span and comprehensibly he became man. I tell you, it was the grace of God that brought the Savior from above to a sinful, wicked world like this. It was the grace of God that sent him to come to the seek and to see of that which was lost. You and I, that's the gospel that we preach. That's the gospel that we love. That's the only gospel that we know. It's the only gospel that he had that we have. He came to the virgin's womb. It was the grace of God that brings salvation to all men. Grace is the source. Number two, blood is the ground. Blood is the ground of justification. Romans 5 and verse 9, justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. There's no other ground on which we stand. There's no other ground that can appease the wrath of a holy God. And we heard that last night. My dear, baptism will not do it. Confirmation will not do it. Good works will not do it. When, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, oh, well, you see, I don't see it. It doesn't matter what you see. The children of Israel were inside the house. They didn't see the blood. My brother said, well, I don't see the blood. It doesn't matter whether you see it or not. And it doesn't matter what you believe or not either. Listen, when I see, when God sees, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And it's the blood, I tell you, that is the ground. It's the blood that maketh an atonement for their soul. Blood is necessary for both incarnation and crucifixion. Do you hear that? Blood, his blood was necessary for both the incarnation and the crucifixion. He had to have flesh and blood. He had to have bones and he had to have veins. He had to have hair and he had to have a face. He had to have hands and, have, and had feet. Had to have feet. He had, he had, he had, ever, he had, he, he had a body fashioned and prepared for him. And in order that he could die, in order that he could, he, he could save us from our sin, that blood had to flow, that spotless, sinless, precious blood of Christ. I tell you, the only man that ever walked earth that was wholly harmless, undefiled, and separate from sinners, he had fingers and hands, he had toes and he had eyes, and he had a head that the battered into pulp. And there on that old rugged cross, let me tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ as it flowed down from Calvary's hill, the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. And I tell you, it is the blood that maketh the atonement for the soul. And it's on the blood that we have the ground. Old Testament times, rivers of blood, rivers of blood and acres of beasts were slain. 
But all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars today couldn't give the guilty peace or wash away the stain. What does it say? But Christ the heavenly lamb bore all our sins away, a sacrifice of nobler name and greater and greater blood than they. I tell you, the precious, sinless, powerful blood of Jesus Christ cleanses men and women from all sin and the sat in the grounds of the blood that we stand tonight. I tell you, source, the source of it, the source of it is, the source of it is faith. And, and, and blood is the ground of it. Grace is the source, blood is the ground. And thirdly, faith is the means. Now listen to this. Faith is the means, Romans 3 and 28. A man is justified through faith. Justified through faith, Romans 5, we have peace with God. By grace are ye saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should be should boast. If just a, if grace is the source and blood is the ground, faith is the means, and that's how you can get saved tonight. Listen, all you need tonight is to exercise faith. The Bible says repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in that finished work of Calvary will bring you to heaven. Just a faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. I, I, I honestly can't remember exercising faith at all the day that I got saved. It must have been that small. But if you believe tonight, if you believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again for your sins, by faith you can come to Christ. Repent of your sins. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And by faith in what is done at Calvary, don't try to understand it. Don't try to analyze it. Just come by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of works. It's not of works. It's not by any works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. All our righteousnesses. And maybe I'm speaking to someone or somebody's watching me tonight. And God bless you, you're doing your best, but your best is not good enough. Maybe you're working hard to try to get to heaven. Maybe you're paying and you're praying and you're saying all sorts of prayers, but it'll never, my friend, it'll never get you into God's heaven. Let me say it with all the love in my heart. If that was the case, Jesus Christ was a fool for dying and God was a fool for sending him and we'd be fools for preaching here tonight. But there's no other way. No other hope. There's no other avenue. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. And there's so many good people out there tonight. And they work hard and they do well. And, and I'm not running down your church. And they go to church and they do everything. And they're baptized and confirmed and all the rest of it. And God bless you. But never, never, never believe for a minute that it's going to get you into God's heaven. Because it will not. That text in Isaiah is a solemn text. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Now, we don't like a filthy rag. We don't like it at all. And I have an illustration that I use about filthy rags, and I'm going to use it tonight. Because I want to drive home to you what the Holy Spirit's trying to say. The Holy Spirit's trying to get into our mind and heart tonight that we can stand before God justified as if we had never sinned and every sin cast into the sea of God's forgetfulness never to be remembered again no more no matter how many they are no matter how few they are Calvary covers it all and the Holy Spirit is trying to get into our mind tonight how, the, how simple it is for you to get saved how simple it is for you to be justified and stand righteous before God but remember this there is no other hope and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags before. And, and the Holy Spirit paints many pictures through the Word of God of man's state and sin. But a filthy rag is something that we all know something about. My father had a milk run. And he had an old lorry. Old lorry. Sometimes there was no brakes in them and sometimes there was no wheels in some of them. And they were awful things. All together sometimes they were dangerous to be out of. But he had an old Thames trader an old Thames trader, and uh, she used to airlock. And uh, you had to get out and get a screwdriver and a spanner, and you had to 
open a wee screw inside her and uh, pump, there's a pump in her and you pump the, the, all the froth out and all the air out till you got pure diesel again. And then with an old rag and they used to wrap the rag round the, round the engine and round the bonnet or wherever the oil spilled. And that oil, that rag was thrown in at the passenger's feet. And now this thing went on maybe twice a week you were at this caper. And they were rubbing this rag. And then we used to bring men into the mart and into the towns. They used to get lifted in and the lorry threw their bicycle out over the creamery cans and in they would get and big dirty filthy nail boots and Wellington boots was on that rag. And man, the diesel soaked it up. And that went on and on and on till there was a stink. There was a stink of that rag which was something awful. And I never can get that, that out of my mind whenever I read for the first time. You know, I never knew a verse of Scripture. To the, uh, when the day the Lord saved me, I didn't know a verse of Scripture at 25 years of age. I never, I never was taught the gospel in Sunday school. I was never told, apart from a, an old uncle, that I needed to be born again. I didn't know, but when I came across this word filthy rag, boy, I, my mind dawned on this old rag. And God says that's what sinners are like. That's what those are like that are, that, 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 that are not saved. And those especially who are righteous, and those especially who believe that, go, that they'll get to heaven by good, good works. No, all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. And I say to you tonight again, if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, it's by grace. It's not going to cost you anything. You're going to have to come with faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is the source. Blood is the ground. Faith is the means. Now, here's the last one. And mind you, it's a very important one. Works is the evidence. Now, just let that sink in a wee minute because... You could misunderstand me very hand. Works is the evidence. James 2 and 24. A man is justified by his works. Man is justified by his works. And not by faith only. Now hold on. Oh, so you're saying now, Mr. Preacher, it's not by faith alone. It's works as well. Now, ah, but listen to James as he goes on. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Now what is he saying? He's saying we're saved by faith alone, but saving faith never stands alone. When a man or woman gets saved by the grace of God, by faith in Christ, there should be evidence of it. There has to be evidence of it. There has to be a sign of a work done. There has to be a sign in the life. You see, this is what's going on up and down our land today. False professions everywhere. My dear friend, listen. If you made a, for a profession for Christ, there should be evidence of it in your life. Faith works. Faith and works are linked together. Works, not working to be saved, but working after you're saved. Now this hits some of God's people hard. Because there's a whole lot of God's people and they come and they said that we pray and they said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And he did. And they're saved now from hell, but that's it. Well, tell me this tonight. How do we know whether you're saved at all or not? How do we know that? Oh, well, I asked the Lord into my heart and I had faith in the finished work of Christ and Jesus Christ come into my life. What's the difference now? What's the difference in you now than before you were saved? Is there any sign of activity? Is there any sign of action? Is there any sign of, 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 of maturity? Or as the Lord Jesus Christ says, by the fruit ye shall know them. Where's the fruit? Come on, now be honest tonight. Face this honesty tonight. Just because you sing a hymn and you go to church and, and you read a wee daily reading doesn't say that you're saved. Have you any desire in your life to serve the Lord? 
Have you any desire to get to prayer meetings? Have you any desire to witness to others? Do the people at home see a difference? Do they see a change? Has old things passed away and all things become new? Are you not ashamed of the gospel or are you still ashamed of the gospel? You see, these are questions, my friend, that we need to ask. Now, you're telling me that I am justified by the grace of God and through the blood of Christ and by faith in Christ. And you tell me that your sins are gone. And thank God, if you came by faith and you believe it with all your heart and you repented of your sins, they're cast into the sea of God's forgetfulness, never to remember it again, no more forever. Job says, there's a bag for our transgressions. And Micah tells us that our transgressions are cast into the sea. Thank God they're gone. As far as the east is from the west, so far as our transgressions from us. I know some of God's people have a problem with past sins. I never have a minute, I never had a thought from the day and hour that I was saved about my past sins. I knew they were gone. I knew I was cleansed. I knew that I was washed in the blood. I knew that moment that I stood in that farmyard. How did I know? I knew I didn't need anybody. I knew that I was saved. I knew that I was born again. I knew because I didn't want the drink. I knew because I didn't want the tobacco. I knew I didn't want the old dirty jokes. There was a work done. I wanted to get to the prayer meeting. For goodness sake, Pat and I, whenever we got saved in Fermanagh, we moved to Lurgan, Craig Avon. I used to stand at the, I used to get switched from the early turn when I was on the, on the late turn. I used to get it on to the early turn to go to hear Willie Mullen preaching in, in the Baptist. I had a big, big uh, tape recorder the size of a flagstone and I used to stand at the bus depot waiting on the bus with a big thing to get into here. I only saved him a year less into, into here uh, Bible teaching. And then we set the big thing up in front, the mic up in front of him, and he preached for an hour. And then we got home and queued up for the bus again in High Street. And went we out to Craig Alvin and put it on, and then listened to it again. You see, there was a work done in our hearts. Is there a work done in your heart tonight? Now, be honest. Maybe I'm speaking to someone tonight. You know, I had three messages for this meeting. I had three this morning. I had two before I, two, when I was walking to that aisle. Be honest tonight. I'm talking to you believers as I close this meeting tonight. Is there a real change in your life? Is there evidence in your life? Do you know without a doubt that your sins are forgiven, your peace with God and your assurance? Do you know all that? And do you want to serve Him? Do you want to work for him? Are you showing any signs of it? You're really born again? Works. Have you desire for prayer? You realize that it's late and it's dark and that the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Are you excited? I said, are you excited? Is there a joy in your soul tonight when you realize that that a man and woman can be justified before God? And that without a doubt, and know it, and show it. Well, bless us, why are we so down and defeated? Why is there no praise? Maybe, maybe this meeting's just for someone, some of you that professed maybe years ago. Boys, if you'd spend as much time seeking the Lord and working for the Lord as you do for yourself, you'd be on fire every minute. Wouldn't you? We just give the Lord the wee bit of the end, and that's it. God help us. It needs to strike into our heart again the, 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 the enormity of Calvary and what it cost him there. I tell you, as, as the bludgeoned him, as the hammered those thorns down on his lovely bow, remember this? He was completely and utterly without sin. 
the sinless, timeless Lamb of God bearing my sins in his own body upon the tree, naked, stripped, was he there? His visage was bar. I, his visage was marred more than any man. Jesus Christ, the one who is eternal, the eternal Son of the eternal God. And he let them pull the hairs from off his cheek. They smacked him and beat him and buffeted him barbarically. And he, yet he over, opened not his mouth. And he done it all for you and me in order that we could be justified and set free. But we're not justified and set free to just live the way we're living. There's more to it than this. There's more to it than this. How do you feel tonight? Believer, I'm talking to you. Can you really praise the Lord? I'm saved. I'm born again by the Spirit of God. I want to serve Him. I want to live for Him. I want to work for Him. I want to pray. I want to win the lost. I want to see others coming to Christ. Or will you confess tonight, I've lost the fire? Will you confess tonight that I'm backslidden and I'm cold and away from God? And I wasn't before him today, and I wasn't before him yesterday. And I have failed, and I have sinned. But remember this, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth, E-T-H, continually cleanses from all sin. You can come back to him tonight. You can get right with God tonight. Backslider, come home tonight. Come back away from the old truck, the old beggarly elements of the world, and come back to Jesus. Come back to your first love. Come back to the one who loves you. Come back to the one who's given you time and space, space to repent. And come back from your old way. Sinner, you come to him tonight. Don't go home without him. May God help you to realize that we can be justified as if we had never sinned before a holy God. And that boggles my mind and it draws from my heart nothing but praise and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father, we just pray that you'll take what is of thyself and drum it into our hearts, Lord. And drum out of us, Lord, if you have to praise and thanksgiving and rejoicing. For, Father, to think that every sin is washed and cleansed neath the blood of Jesus. And, Father, we don't want to praise you tonight forever reaching sinners such as we, forever calling us out of darkness into light. And Lord, I don't know about these people here tonight, but I want to work for you. I want to serve you. I want the evidence of that faith, oh God, to be seen in my life. I want, Lord, to go through with thee. I want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, Father, we pray that you'll recommission men and women in this meeting tonight, that you'll come, Lord God, to those that are cold and away from God, set a fire into their souls this evening, we pray thee. And for dear sinners, Lord, who at this moment are in their sin, and in a second's time can be as if they never sinned. How marvelous, how miraculous, how wonderful. And, oh God, all they have to do is to come. Come. Lord, we pray that they'll step over to thee tonight and say, Lord, I'm coming. Coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flows from Calvary. May God help us to come.